organizations will say that they have a philosophy of doing X. Then I say, well, what about a situation like this? Then I hear a lot of, well, right. And that, that's the stuff that erodes trust. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Tausif Rahman, a full-stack workforce consultant with over 15 years of experience. He currently serves as the growth leader of Mercer's career practice in Northern California and Hawaii. I am so jealous. And Tausif's expertise lies in helping organizations attract, retain, and engage their talent to achieve their best performance. So his work covers a range of areas including job and work design, Awards, workforce analytics, technology enablement, and transformation. But today on the podcast, we will be discussing an important and timely topic, which is pay transparency. So Tausif has been sharing insights online, and we saw this, and we want to like pick his brain on it. So we want to know how to effectively talk about pay and the importance of transparency in creating a healthy work culture. So let's dive right into the conversation with Tausif Rahman. Welcome to the podcast and thank you for joining us. Yeah, happy to. Thanks, Samin. We're, we're so interested in this because it's the talk of the town. So let's let's dive in. Like sure. There are legal obligations now for pay transparency, but why do you believe that organizations should embrace pay transparency apart from compliance? Yeah, so this is a great question. We get this a lot, right? So is, is it a compliance topic or is it an employee mm-hmm. engagement uh, topic? And certainly it's a bit of both. You want to comply. I'm not going to say not to do that, um, but it's you're kind of losing the point by doing by doing that by only focusing on the compliance uh, right. side. The the reason organizations should embrace it is it's because of employee and candidate expectations. Like put simply, um, uh, we do research on this and see various forms of survey data on this. Eighty percent of employees say they want pay transparency. Fifty um, percent of uh, employees candidates won't apply for a job without it. Um, wow. I can share some anecdotes later on kind of what that means for what we've been seeing with some clients in terms of how they've had to respond. The, right. There's some benefits, right, that come along with this. Mm-hmm. It's it's having a more compelling value proposition for employees. Um, I will comment that, you know, for organizations that need to continue to attract and differentiate themselves in the market, um, this is one of the kind of top current ways to, to, to do that. Right. If they don't, they'll be left behind, right? I mean, yeah, this is the I mean, a little bit, right? And a, a little bit. And then conversely, and we can chat about this, you know, when it makes sense, there's an element of either left behind or they, they'll they they'll have to catch up, right? Be, be, you know, right. in terms of other organizations setting the pace on this. And um, being left behind is one thing if you're okay with being left behind. But, but when you're not okay with it, then you actually have to catch up. And it's a lot of work right. to catch up on this. Okay, so let's get to the work. But before that, like sure. common misconceptions for people that are reading about this. What are the common misconceptions on pay transparency and how do you address them? Sure. So I think the most common one or maybe a, a common one is that it, it's, it's about sharing what other people make. And it's not about that. Hmm. It's not about publishing or saying... Steve gets paid X and Janine gets paid Y and so and so gets paid paid Z. Um, it's caring about um, what the pay range is for the role, right? If you're either applying it for it, um, for some places and some organizations, caring what the pay is for the job that you're already in, and more importantly, not it's not just what it is. It's not saying we pay between A and B for job C. It's sharing how you're paid for it, why you're paid for it, um, okay. how will people continue to progress through it. So it's it's it's, it's a little bit more. It's a lot more complex. It's a lot. Yeah, I was going to use the word complex. It's a lot more than just saying, here's the range for the job. Right, right. So there's a lot of thought that goes into it. I mean, yeah. you also have to think of how to communicate it. It gives, exactly. you should give context because if not, then, I mean, people can, you know, take it out of context and like use right. it, right? Against yeah. each other. Well, yeah. And, 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 and it's more of, you know, you're providing a piece of, and for the, the joke I, I, I like to make is that if you see a pay range on a job posting or your manager tells you the pay range for this job, 
that's step 17 in a series of events that have happened to get you to that point. And, right. you know, I'm not saying there's exactly 16 steps, but along the way, you figured out what's the level of the job. Is it in accounting or in IT? What's the geographic location of this job? Right? M many things need to be determined to set a you know range of pay um, for the job. What's the business environment? What's the business context? And so skipping to for job X we pay you know you know eighty to one hundred thousand without providing you can't provide all the context. There's not not enough right. time in the world without providing none of that context of how to how that that got determined i think that's that's really the challenge um, along with it along with the so day. it's i mean it's a lot of communication work it right is. and structuring and communicating like the pay ranges like until what point are we going to talk about the context of this certain role and how it got to that Absolutely. salary point? Absolutely. The other other talking point I like to use is that when you think of pay transparency, people think about, you know, it's about pay strategy and a bit of, you know, some communication. I say it is at most 49% about pay strategy and at least 51% about communication. Right. And I talk to clients, they're like, oh, yeah, this is 30 percent about the pay and 70 percent about like how we communicate it. So I, I, I just I just give that comment of at most it's 49 percent right. about the comp. It's you need both. It's not zero percent about the comp. You need to have that 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 well, um, well understood and rationalized. But it's not it's not a zero percent comms exercise. Okay, I think we'll we'll talk a lot about the communications <laughs> sure. later on. But one other thing that complicates, you know, structuring pay and the strategy is that now people are working from anywhere they want to in the world. Right. Sure, sure. <laughs> Remote working. So like with that comes different, like varying costs of living. So how has the shift to remote work impacted like compensation structures and what are some strategies that companies can adopt to ensure that it's fair and transparent when it comes to pay practices? Sure. Yeah. And, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great question because I think organizations have largely, I won't say been silent, but haven't had a good story about what they pay for as it relates to geography. Mm -hmm. Is it cost of living? Is it cost of labor? Is it both? Do we care about the labor market or do we care about the value of the work being produced no matter where it is? Like right. these are very important questions. And I I jokingly think that I think a lot of organizations say, yes, is the answer to everything. But that's not possible, right? The answer to seven questions can't all be yes. Right. right. Um, so to your to your to your question, Janine, right? Like how has it evolved? It's actually it's not so much the evolution of practices. There's certainly some of that that's happened, which I can talk about. Organizations just had to get actually clear and answer the question mm -hmm. in terms of what do we pay for a job in location one versus location two, and what is driving the difference? And is this something that differs um, between organizations? Like they have to decide what they value more or do you have an answer? Like it should be done. This way. No, no, no. Great question. We, you know, I certainly have perspectives, but it's all going to be based off of what the organization values, right? So, does the organization want to pay for local cost of labor in different parts and basically acknowledge the fact that the supply and demand of talent in one geography is different from another? Or does an organization want to say, we will pay the same thing globally for all types of, you know, for, for all of the similar type of work? It, it's a spectrum. There are certainly pros and cons to where you are on that spectrum. But more importantly, it's a, where are you on that spectrum? Why are you where you are on that spectrum? And are you prepared as an organization to continue to stick to that answer? And not do it on a case by case, you know, change, change your answer on a case by case basis. That's that's I think the hardest part because organizations will say that they have a philosophy of doing X. Then I say, well, what about a situation like this? Then I hear a lot of well, 
<laughs> well, what about situation Y? Well, it becomes oh, a well, well, life circumstance. Right, right. That's the stuff that erodes trust, right? And makes it difficult to have a clear, clear story. But it, I guess it also depends on, like, where the people are in the world, right? Like, if, if they're geographically in places that are more or less, like, similar in terms of um, pay structures and how much people get paid for a certain type of work, then it isn't so much of a problem. But the more diverse, then the more difficult it is to answer. It is, it is. So there's the, there's the geographic differences. And we can talk about, you know, an example even with any country. Pick Pick any country, the UK, France, Canada, wherever... Ge you know, geographic pay differences are more nuanced than people care to admit. Um, the cost of labor doesn't vary the same way for all types of jobs. And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is um, we've seen in some research that I've done that uh, tech jobs, you know, if you look at national data of how all jobs pay differently from one location to another, let's say there's a 20% difference between a, you know, location A and B. But when we look at software engineering jobs, it might be a minus 10% difference. When we look at an accounting job, it actually might be a minus 25% difference. Because the whole idea is that when you talk about national differences in cost of labor, those are all averages that bundle in a lot of things. And the reality is, it really depends on the type of work that you're in. And as you can imagine, depending on the uh, local or national supply and demand for talent, the cost of labor can vary. So. So being very clear, so I'll give you an example, right? We say, well, we pay 20% less outside of LA, you know, uh, San Francisco, New York. That sounds nice to say, right? Sounds very clean and simple to say. Mm -hmm. But that's not the reality of how software engineering jobs are paid outside of San Francisco, New York, right? They're, it's not that, for example, 20%, right? So are you going to pay, are you going to be less competitive in certain jobs? because you want to come up, you want to have a simple talking point? Or do you want to kind of be closer to reality? Right. And then have a more complex talking point that people will understand when you explain it to them, but it requires more explanation. Pay transparency is opening up so many like new debates also, right? In terms of like, why should people get paid that much in this industry or for this job post versus another? Um, what, like, what are some top like debates that, that come to mind that you've seen from, from pay transparency? So, from opening up that, that box, the Pandora's box? Yeah, you know what I'll share is I, I think there has been, I, when I've talked to kind of other kind of reporters and other folks, I think there's this concern people will somehow magically find out something about how a job's paid that they had zero clue about in their life. Mm -hmm. And maybe I give our society a little bit more credit, right, for those right. who, like, spend, you know, all of 30 seconds on the internet. Mm -hmm. Whether it's purely for what that company does or not, like, I don't think the information is that unclear. Right. That's true. Whether That's true. In, general, in general. Right. Right. Is, is an internet search going to give you the accurate number? Absolutely not. Will it kind of give you a sense of this job pays X or Y? Yeah, probably. So I think it's just this. I think we've moved so quickly past pay secrecy as a society that our knee-jerk reactions haven't caught up to the reality of the world as people. Oh, but aren't you scared that this... No, no, I'm not. Right. I, well, and, and I, You've and been I exposed. Like, <laughs> I've been exposed to me talking this for the last, like, five, seven years. So I'm just like... So if you're asking me... Right. Like, the, da the, the, the data are out there, right? Like, it's... Then maybe it's more about, like, how it's being communicated to... I mean, in the news and within this, organizations. This so, is where I see the issue. Right. So what do you see companies struggling with when it comes to talking about pay and compensation? Like, what are the no-nos and yeah. like, what are the must-dos? Yeah. So, so, so I'll mention a couple of things. I'd say the simplest no-no is not to treat this like a compliance exercise. 
Okay. Right? I, I think that is the worst thing organizations can do. Um, it's an employee value proposition topic. It requires real consideration and alignment to business goals. And um, I think I think that's you know a no no. I also think there are some organizations from a no no, like you said, uh, say this doesn't apply to me. I don't have a law in my you know region that requires right. it to happen. Fine, great. It all doesn't matter. They haven't realized it yet that. It doesn't matter whether there's a law there or not. Um, other organizations will voluntarily share this voluntarily share this information, and they'll have to figure out whether they want to be competitive or not. Or not, right? So no, no company is an island and immune to this. And to be clear, I'm not saying organizations need to, but just let's go through the thought exercise. When employees ask, "Hey, our competitor shares this info and we don't." Why? You just have to have an answer to that. And what I'm saying is that you, you know, you need to do what the, you know, what other people are doing. I'm saying you can't ignore the question. You actually need to come up with an answer to these questions, even if you choose to do the bare minimum. Like we, we, I work with plenty of organizations that you do that and said, hey, great, I get it, and actually makes business sense. You don't, you know, you don't have the infrastructure in place. You don't have the job architectures. Totally fine. What's the story of how we're going to say that that's that's right. not what we're going to do because no period it, you know is not is not a is not a valid response right like what you mentioned earlier we have to give like the public and the employees the benefit of the doubt that they are aware so if they ask why you can't just be like because that's how it is they're going right. to want to know an answer right. and if not they're going to be like oh okay or they're going to be like oh okay i'm out of here right it's going to be one of two right. things so. right it almost sounds like it's another test for organizations to figure out what their values really are and stick to it. I mean, there there was a lot of that, like after the pandemic. Okay, like we care about our employees. Now we have to invest in well being and wellness. Are you actually gonna put the money out for that or for DEI? And now it's like pay transparency. Are you? Do you really like? Does it align with your values or not? And are you seeing yeah. most organizations are like happy to do this? It, it's honestly half-half, I'll say, right? So there's, you know, half of organizations are very much saying, um, yep, we're already doing it. We're going to, we have a plan and we're, we're executing on it half, you know, and, and, and or we're exploring it. Another, uh, especially less than half, I want to say like something like 40% are saying we are doing with the minimum that's required and we have no plans to go further. So uh, it's a mix, it's a mix. And how would you, like, what are some tips or steps that organizations should take to communicate this properly and effectively? Yeah, so so I think it's really important to think about the whole end-to-end -end experience, meaning how is it communicated uh, mm -hmm. for candidates up front as part of the TA process? How is it communicated, um, you know, to employees while they're there? Uh, what is it? Uh, what you you mentioned? We'd mentioned in our conversation context. How is that context communicated? Of what the level of the job is, what type of work it's doing, how you how the organization pays for different you know uh, different uh, work in different parts of the world or in the country. It's it's important to have that holistic view, and more importantly, tie it to the broader employee experience, pay equity, engagement um, uh, lens. As opposed to saying, as opposed to answering what I think people is the question, which is the question is you need to tell people the range of pay. That's not the question. Right. You need to explain people to people how did you come up with that range of pay? Why are you paid in that range of pay? And what can you do to move along in it? Like these are the questions people want to know. It's almost like a, a like a commitment document right like when it comes to pay like these are our rules and you know like what we've decided to move forward with and from that like okay each position earns this much more sure, or less exactly. <laughs> yeah 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 i don't want to call it rules i mean like there's always a need to flex etc but um you know when i i think the biggest challenge is and I can sympathize with organizations is that when you're being transparent on these topics that have largely been 
one-off and not disclosed, you didn't have to worry about whether it made sense. Like, whether decision three checks out against decision seven, you never had to think about that. Mm. Like, yeah. But that's, that's over now. Right. And that's where I think the, 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 the anxiety is coming from, which is, you actually have to have a reason why you do things now. <laughs> I thought that's how it should have been from the beginning. And some but I guess do, organizations, right? I mean, they're, not... they're huge. So they can't necessarily, I mean, maybe in the past, it's like, we know this. Communication is an issue. Like, team A has no idea how team B does things. And now they kind of have to have, um, they have to be tied together. In right. One right. organization. Right. It's not nothing, right? But the the percentage that's allowable of illogical decisions, like that's gone down. Right. Okay. Let's talk about transparency. Okay, not just pay transparency, sure. but transparency. Yep. Because I guess that, mm -hmm. that's at the core of this all. Yep. So from yep. your experience, like how important is being transparent? Um, when it comes to boosting engagement, earning the trust of um, the workforce. Yeah. So a lot, lot of research kind of, of, our, of our own and otherwise shows that it's quite critical, right? It, 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 it drives so many things. It supports DEI goals. And, 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 and I'd say not that that's unimportant, but there's an even simpler tie to broader transparency and clarity is it's what helps organizations attract and retain candidates and employees, right? When we think about all the research that's been done over decades of what people, you know, when you ask people, do I understand how my pay is set? Low score, right? Am I satisfied with this? You know, low score. Um, I believe I have a career here at this organization, low score. And then I talk to these same clients, like, do you share your, you know, career guide? No. Do you share how people can increase their pay? No, right? I'm like, okay, so you expect people to basically be unhappy about it, right? You know what I mean? It's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's like being mad about something you've put no effort into fixing. Right. And like so, when... and, and I say that about transparency in general, like what I talk about, like, it's not just pay, right? It's what does a career here look like? Mm -hmm. Right? That and... is transparency. Right. And like pay, like for me, for example, I try not to look at pay so much, you know, and it's like, okay, like, am I being fulfilled in this job? Like, Absolutely. am I being challenged? Am I learning? Is there room for growth? But to be completely honest, pay is really important. I mean, <laughs> without the basis of that, you wouldn't be in the job that you're in. So, yeah. like, in terms of transparency in general, talking about pay is actually really important. And I honestly never even realized that. It's always an awkward conversation. How can we get over that awkwardness, you think? Oh, that's a that's a good one. Um, how can we get over something that has been, you know, common? I mean, people say don't talk about, right? It's like it's been yeah, really it's, it's, it's a very strange one to me, right? It's like saying, I don't, uh, you know, in society, we've gone through these sorts of revolutionary, and I don't think this is revolutionary, but revolutionary changes of like how people view the world, like. The Earth was flat. No, it's round. It's at the right. center of our universe, you know, uh, of mm -hmm. our galaxy. No, it's the sun, right? Like, and I think we need to be willing and open to conceiving of a world that changes, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that sounds very philosophical, fine. And if you want a practical way to get over it, it's you know, I'll just share with you a story from a client where they were like, yeah, we'll get to pay transparency later, later. It's cool. It's cool. Until their candidate pipeline just totally dried up. They didn't know why. And it's because their competitors for other types of roles were, you know, these are, you know, for, you know, entry level roles. 
hearing the pay ranges, and they figured out that they had to do it. So they had to do it to remain in business. Right. Right? So it's either going to be something where you get with the program mm-hmm. or the program is going to be given to you. Right. And retention is so important. Getting the right talent is so important. Right. And right. This and is and, 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 a way to attract. Do you think it's going to... Is it already like um, housekeeping levels? Like this has to be done, you think, in your, in your perspective? I, I expect... So I'll give I'll give another example. So um, <laughs> uh, I want to say 2016, 17. There were at least you know here here in California, there was salary history bans, which was recruiters or the employee employer cannot ask the candidate what their prior pay history was. Oh my gosh, Janine! Like the how will recruiters do their jobs? How will we do this? Like it was just like how will life go on? Right. <laughs> right. right? People forgot that that was an issue, hmm. right? Life went I think on. The is more complex and challenging. Don't get me wrong, right? But I give it give it another two two to four more years. I'd say we're kind of one year into it, mm-hmm. right? You know, when I think about you know last year and certainly this year, a lot of localities coming into play, and then EU coming online, mm-hmm. and I want to say three years time, right? I think that each. each State has you know three uh, each country has three three years to put into effect. Um, we'll chat about this six years later, and this will be another like thing that has happened, right? In in the evolution of how work gets done. I guess like any change, there's just that awkward <laughs> period that we mentioned. Yeah. That's like, how right. do we get this done? How do we do yeah. it right? And later on, we're going to have like the best practices in place and it's going to be norm. And, and, and uh, it, it, the, the world moves quickly, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it's not long ago where companies said, oh, and we've decided to globally stop asking for prior salary history. Right. And you're like, oh, OK, good job. I'll like, give you two claps. Right. <laughs> Great. And if a company says that now and oh, now we've decided to have that, I'm like, oh. Where have you been? to the party? Where have you been? Right? <laughs> this is not something you give yourself <laughs> credit for. Yeah. And it's not like welcome to the club, but it's just like the world has moved on. Right. Right. I'm absolutely glad you're doing it. So glad. I understand it needs time, but you can't take credit for it. Right. Right? right, you can't take credit for catching up. Mm-hmm. So get and with the program like while it's while it's early. <laughs> well, well, if it's an opportunity to differentiate, and I'm not saying that every organization needs to do it. To be clear, right? Um, like I said, in a lot of our you know work, there's organizations which are going to be doing, and and that actually, I truly have you know clients and kind of friends who do this. So like, I'm like, yeah, absolutely makes sense. You know? Yeah. This is you're you're doing exactly, and you have the story. I don't care what it is organizations do; they just have to have their story straight. That that that's my biggest advice. Right, right, right. You can choose to be like, no, we're not going to share pay ranges openly, blah blah blah, for these reasons. Great. It's the four reasons part that I care about. Right, the whys and have your story straight, your narrative, and everything aligned. Right, like. Mm-hmm. We believe we believe in this as a company, as an organization. Yeah. These are our values, exactly. and therefore, yeah, we're not an organization that you know where we believe pay is an important part of why you want to you know stay and join. It's the mm-hmm. mission and the work we do. Um, you know, we can share this you know upon request. Um, you know, here are all the other things that are important to us. And are like that's a very logical and valid reason as to like, hey, we're an organization that doesn't want to pay to be the main reason why people choose to stay or leave. Um, you know, you can discuss it with your manager, but no, we're not going to blast it on, on the internet because right. we think that's not the right thing. Fine. Right. But there is like a coherent story as to like right. what, what right. that is. Like, that that makes can, sense. <laughs> right. And, and people can choose to agree with it or not, but you avoid a situation where there's a vacuum of information and people start creating stories around it. Like if someone's going to tell the story about why a company does or doesn't do something, shouldn't it be the company? Right. Which sounds so simple. It's true. (laughs) But it's true. 
Okay, yeah. I want to like wrap up because yeah. we don't want to take too much of your yeah. time. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, just sure. broad thoughts on the future of work and workplaces. Yeah. Like, what's your wish for yeah. the future of work? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a great question. I was chatting with this uh, with a friend of mine uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, I w- my wish, right, is that for practitioners in this workforce space, that they ask themselves a serious question, which is how much of what was designed today that we have was with the end goal of supporting employees or even the business, as opposed to the preferences of the people doing the design. And what I mean by that is, and we're all guilty of it, to be clear. Right. If I'm going to throw a party, I'm going to throw the party I want. Right? Versus yeah, it's your party. Versus, right. Right? <laughs> okay. And it's hard to throw a party for other people, but like then you don't know. And like, yeah, let me just do what I, you know, we right. fall into these. And, and so yeah, I'll put this another way. You know, did we design HR for HR folks? Right. Or did we do it for the business? Right. Mm-hmm. Forget the employees, and I don't mean that in a bad way, right? Like, did we do? Did HR do it for HR, or did HR do it for the business? And I think that's a real, it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, and I, and I think it's a very, yeah, it's a very very tough one. And it's, I know it's an off putting question, but it basically, you know, in my mind, you know, I think that's the hope, right? Which is how how much of the stuff that we've designed have really been for the benefit of employees. Right. I mean, you study it, right? Like, you study it, you know, more or less, based on science, based on psychology, how you should put your people first, how to help them um, improve the way they work, how they can feel fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Are you putting it into practice or are you just, you know, ticking boxes for for leadership, you mean? Right. Right. And and, and that's it. And it's, it's, I'll go back to the earlier piece about pay transparency. It's okay if the answer is like, yep, I've designed this for ourselves and our leadership because that's our plan. Mm-hmm. I'm good with that answer. Right. Right. But from a hope is I really want HR practitioners to be clear and not confused that they're doing it for another group when they're really doing it for the other group. Right. Right. I- I'm doing it for group C. Are you really doing it for Group C or Group B? I I don't care who you're doing it for. Just don't don't lie to yourselves about who you're doing this for. It's funny because we had a team. Um, some members of our team go to the Unleash event, and their favorite mm. takeaway is that um, one of the the lines that they said was like, "HR now has a seat in the table and like the leadership table, and they're not gonna give it up." And maybe like that's tied to what you're saying, is like. Now, finally, they have a voice in how the business is run, and that is how it should be, and they do not want to give it up. So I think your hope is coming to life. <laughs> I, I, I hope so, too, right? Let's, so it's like, let's, let's not waste that opportunity of, great, now we're the, the, uh, with the seat of the table. Oh, we can now design things for the other people at the table. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right? That's my hope. And right. organizations have been doing that too. I'm not saying it's everyone, right? But when I think about the employees, candidates, and like organizations that are you know, lagging behind in a little way, like that's my hope, right? right. That it it, it 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 that work becomes something that is beneficial for all, right? For the organization and the employee and society, right? And the way you do that is by designing with all of those stakeholders in mind. 
And on that note, I think that's a lovely thing to reflect on for, for our listeners. So we'll end with that. It was such an insightful episode. And if anyone wants to talk more about pay transparency or anything that we talked about today, I suggest you follow Tausif on Twitter and LinkedIn because like, I've learned so much just by following him <laughs> and like, reading what he reads in his comments. So thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Yeah. No, thanks for the chat and I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah.